Okay, let's continue where we left off. Um, we have to show the lines of the clock. And we'll start with the ones representing the, with the line representing the hours. So let's go back on our project then similarly to what we did for custom ring, we're now going to create a function that returns a custom line mesh. So let's go ahead and do that. To make this mesh, we'll need a bunch of parameters, the height, the width, the depth, the environment map, the color of the line, and the environment map intensity, which is basically a parameter that defines how bright the line will look like in the scene. So let's start by creating a box mesh, which is going to represent the bulk of our line. The box buffer geometry is simple as it gets, we're just passing the parameters as arguments. Now let's return the box. Let's place it somewhere in our scene. This is just a test to make sure that everything we did so far is working. So let's check our scene. And there we go, we see a little box. This could be enough, but as always, we can do better. So what we can do to make this line look a little bit better is to place a cylinder at the top and a cylinder at the bottom to emulate lines with a rounded cap. So let's try to do that. Let's start by adding a cylinder at the top of the line. The radius of the cylinder obviously has to be half as wide as the box buffer geometry itself. We do not want the cylinder to lie flat on the plane. We want it to face the camera and so we're rotating it by 90 degrees. And we're also placing it at the very top of the line. Let's now make the bottom cap the line. This is pretty much the same identical code except that we are using minus a to place the cap at the bottom of the line. Now let's make a group to include all the meshes and return the group instead of the box. Like that. Let's save and check our scene again. And as you can see we now have a rounded line. This line will represent the hours of our clock though, so let's position it such that it does that. We'll replace the statement with these two lines. Inside the animation loop we're going to create a data object. Then we have to find which angle corresponds to the current hour. And that's one of the ways that we could do that. There are 12 hours on the clock and we can map them to 360 degrees with this statement so that we can get the angle position of the current hour of the current date. I also forgot to add custom here. Now we have to rotate the line by this amount to make sure that it reflects the current hour. By rotating along the z-axis we can achieve that. So let's check our scene. The line is not being properly translated so it doesn't look right but the rotation is good because it's 3 o'clock here. We also have to properly position the line on a unit circle to make sure that it reflects the current hour. To do that, we can use a simple trigonometry trick. Basically, given any point on a circle, and assuming that the circle is at the origin of the screen, we can find the x component of the point by, ta by taking the cosine of the angle, and we can find the y component of the point by taking the sine of the angle. That's basically what I'm doing here with this line. And now we can see that the line representing the hours is properly placed on the circle. Let's now make the same lines for the minutes and the seconds. Okay, let's paste the new lines. Now let's position the minutes. I was also making a small mistake, we have to negate the angle to make it look right. You're also noticing that here I'm dividing by 60 because we only have 60 minutes, sadly. And finally we can position the seconds with the same exact logic. And this is the result. We have a working clock. Now the lines are not following the mouse and that's something that we'll fix next. but. We can at least appreciate for a second that we have a working three-dimensional clock and it looks really, really cool. Now, I'm not gonna lie, 
Properly positioning these lines such that they follow the rings is not that simple. I wish I could have found a better way of doing that, but unfortunately I had to use a bunch of matrix multiplications that are not immediately easy to understand. I'll do my best to walk you through that, but it's a bit complicated, so don't get defeated if you don't fully understand it. Um, getting to this point already, it's pretty difficult, so you should be very happy with what we achieved so far. Anyway, let's go on and let's make that function. Let's, let's place it right before the custom ring definition. And without spending too much time on it, what's happening here basically is that we have three matrices. The first one of these matrices is translated in line by the amount specified in the parameters. Then the second matrix is rotating the line depending on the angle that we specify. And the third matrix is going to place the line such that it follows the ring rotation. After we multiply all the matrices together, we have applied the transformation that we want. I wish I had found a better way of doing that, and I'm really sorry that this is a little bit complicated, but I promise that we just have to use this function to place the line correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. We can replace these two lines with this function call. And as a reminder, this is the amount that we are translating the line further away from the center of the screen. And this value is how much we're translating it in the depth. So basically the z-axis for the scene. This line is, in particular is not going to be translated in the z-axis. Similarly for the minutes, we're going to replace these two lines with this function call. And we're going to have another one for the seconds. Let's not forget to import the matrix for object, as well as the Euler and vector free. And finally, we have our working clock. And now the lines are being properly rotated to reflect the position of the central ring. The last thing that we're missing are the lines representing the hours at the top of the first ring. I'll quickly go over that and I won't spend too much time uh, explaining how they work because the video is probably already too long. But let's go ahead and do that. We'll make another function that is going to create the mesh group for all those lines. We need 12 of them because, well, we have 12 hours to display. Then we are going to actually add these lines to the scene. There we go. And now we have to position them such that Similarly to the seconds, minutes, and hour line, they have to follow the rotation of the first ring. And so we're going to reuse the rotate line utility to do that. We can add a simple for each loop that is going to iterate over all of the lines and position them such that they appear at the very top of the ring. And I just noticed that there is a typo in the function. It's not line, but custom line. So after we save that, if we check our scene, there we go. The clock is fully working. We have all the lines at the top and the project is completed. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty sh this is a pretty short script considering how much we're doing. And the end result is pretty cool. Without too much effort, we have built an interesting project in 3JS. I kind of like it. And if you guys like these kinds of projects and you want to see more, let me know in the comments and I might make more of these videos. I'll try to keep them short and simple. And yeah, until then, see you guys in the next video.